As gamers get pickier about what games they'll drop their hard-earned money on, game companies have to come up with big selling points for their games. In Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, that selling point is a gigantic open world spanning the entire country of Bolivia. It also features dozens of story missions and varied gameplay that gives the player the option to go guns out or sneak their way through enemy bases. All of these features sound great on the back of a box, but sometimes bigger isn't better. Some issues with Ghost Recon Wildlands are highlighted immediately as the first mission of the game has the player driving to an enemy base. While taking the long drive there, I couldn't help but notice the amount of pop-in that was occurring on screen. Even on a PS4 Pro, Wildlands is constantly marred with minor technical issues, which is a shame since the game generally looks great when all the textures are loaded in. Other problems show their ugly head after hours of play, and most of these revolve around the actual gameplay. Almost every single mission in Wildlands follows the following formula. The player drives to an enemy base, the player kills all of the enemies, and the player grabs a certain object, be it a hostage or vehicle, from the base. While this exercise is pretty fun at first, it grows stale rather quickly as only the final mission in each area feels unique. On top of the lack of variety, Wildlands is very rough around the edges. When playing with AI squad mates, they'll often stand right in front of enemy soldiers. Thankfully this doesn't cause an alert, as the squad mates are invisible unless the player character is spotted. While it's a positive that the poor AI doesn't result in the player being compromised, this solution to poor programming breaks the illusion of being a squad of super spies. Another issue is that teammates don't actually have to be in a position to take the sniper shots I would command them to take. I often saw them somehow shoot through rocks to get headshots. It's incredibly sloppy, and that sloppiness ends up defining the gameplay. Wildlands is very much a jack of all trades, yet a master of none. The stealth generally works well, but it's not nearly as well thought out as other games in the genre. Unlike Metal Gear Solid 5, you can't move bodies around, so eventually dead enemies will be spotted and alarms will be raised if you aren't super careful about the order you take them out in. Meanwhile, the shooting is pretty solid, but it never provides the awesome action moments of a Far Cry game. It's a game stuck between genres, afraid to commit to an experience and one that never truly gels due to it. Things get slightly better when playing with an actual person, but be warned that playing with a single human partner will make all of your AI teammates go away. This puts players at a significant disadvantage, as while the AI squad mates are often annoying, they are undoubtedly good assets on the field when it comes to reviving players and sniping. Additionally, while my favorite moments did come while playing with a friend, it was often at the game's expense. We laughed at poor mission checkpointing, commiserated when we had to travel 5k to the next area, and were entertained when we ran into glitches. It certainly provided a good time, but not in the way it was intended to. As I mentioned earlier, the sheer size of Wildlands' world ends up being a double-edged sword for the game. It's impossible to not be impressed with the amount of mileage that has been mapped out by the devs, but it's not actually all that interesting to traverse. From miles of snowy mountains and giant plains, I often found myself bored while traveling from one objective to another. Despite being one of the largest game worlds ever, it's also one of the least interesting. A large part of this is due to the environments lacking any life. When compared to Ubisoft's own Watch Dogs 2, the difference in quality of the open world is staggering. The in-game residents of Bolivia only exist to have their cars stolen, and so that AI teammates can scream at the player if an innocent gets shot. They never truly exist in the world, as stores will be completely empty, and there's no way to interact with them beyond shooting them. While the citizens of Bolivia are largely ignored, there is some attempt to give personality to the high-ranking members of the cartel. For example, the person training Narcos is a discharged army ranger that's suffering from PTSD. Further complicating matters, this soldier is one that the main character used to serve with. You'd think this would lead to an interesting story moment between the two, but that's not the case. The player's ordered to shoot the veteran without a second thought, and the story is generally paper thin despite its many attempts at something deeper than the average shooter. Despite all those issues, the sense of progress in Wildlands feels very addictive. There's a huge number of upgrades, intel, and side missions that litter the map, which means the next goal is only ever a few hundred meters away. Even as I grew annoyed with the stale gameplay, I always wanted to get to that next weapon attachment or gain a new skill. There's a lot wrong here, but it undeniably has its hooks into me. Ghost Recon Wildlands is a game that's hurt by its own ambition. Its blend of genres results in a game that tries to do everything, yet excels at nothing. The sheer scope of the world makes it impossible to be filled with interesting details, and Ubisoft has managed to make the entire country of Bolivia feel boring. Nothing fits together as well as it should, and it all results in one very disappointing package.